Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome, or hopefully it's welcome back to USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm the president, founder, and chief listening officer here in our network, and we're coming to you live from our studio here in Boca Raton, Florida. Our show today is What's Trending, and I'll tell you what's trending, a lot of stress, a lot of people who are burned out and complaining, and it's impacting our skin, our hair, our well-being. We've got an expert with us today. If you've watched our shows before, you've met her. Her name is Rachel Bame, and she is just an encyclopedia full of information to help us feel better, to deal with burnout, recognize the symptoms, come up with some strategies that we can actually deal with this, acknowledge it, and find ways to get rid of it. And at the same time, keeping our stress levels low, keeping our skin and hair looking gorgeous. Let's welcome Rachel Bame to the program. Hello. Hello. No pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> well, just having interviewed you many times before, you know what you're talking about. You're, you're walking the walk and talking the talk. So thanks again for being here. Thank you. And I should say for anybody listening, well, we know tons of people are, but because we get the stats, but for those listening, walking the walk and talking the talk means like I sometimes trip, right? Like I actually had a book out. It's it's out of publication right now, but I had a book called Tripping in Public. So it's not that I'm perfect. It's not that any of us are perfect. It's that we just know how to better recover and catch ourselves before we completely face plant in public. Thank you for that disclaimer. I love it. <laughs> So Rachel, as a burnout coach and a stress skin and hair consultant, you work with people in many areas. I do know from one of our team members, Red O'Loughlin, we have to get to the root cause of things. Many times we want to kind of like pretty things up and take some pills and do take this, but we have to get to the root cause of it. So I want to start out with burnout because I kind of mm. feel like I maybe have been experienced this a little bit and the, the red flags start to show and, and rear their head. But at the same time, this is what I want to talk about. We have things we have to get done. We've got deadlines, yeah. expectations, people we have to take care of, but yet we're not feeling 100%, but we got to keep going, going and go. What do we do to slow this whole thing down without annoying people or disappointing people? Yeah, well, I see, there's a few things there and um, I'm going to just take a quick note. So I remember to come back to a couple of those points um, because they are really important. Okay, so... The first is, you know, if you work with me, I'm not going to tell you and, and no one should tell you, oh, well, to be stress free in this world, you need to. And I've said this before in our previous discussion on burnout, right? A previous um, conversation. This is not about quitting life, quitting your job necessarily. That's another story. But this isn't about kind of jumping out of the world and going to like self-isolate in a yurt somewhere and thinking that's going to solve your problems. That is escaping. That is not a solution. I mean, unless that is like your idea of a perfect life and you can afford to do that, right? I mean, if that's if that's you, great. But if that's your way of, if you think that when we talk about taming stress or making friends with stress about um, better managing life, if you are afraid that we're going to tell you, especially for fellow business owners, well, just, just stop it. Just stop doing those things. Just, you know, say no all the time. That's not realistic. You know, Kathy, when we talked before, made a great point. Like, I still have to answer client calls. You know, it's not that we're turning all of this off. Again, it's how do we manage it? I often hear people say, well, when things calm down, I'll... Here's the truth. Things don't just calm down. You have to calm them down. 
And that's, that's a distinction, right? So what you're talking about, Dr. Jacqueline, is how do we then take control in a realistic way to the extent that we can? What is it that we can, can we, what is it that we can take control of? And that's where somebody like a coach, um, you know, hi, uh, bias, but that's where somebody like a coach can come in and say, all right, here's the outdoor, here's the um, kind of outsider view. I'm going to be your guide. I'm going to help you figure this out. And we're going to go on this journey together. I love what you shared there because so many times people are waiting for something to happen. When this happens, I'll do this. No, it's so I really truly believe what you said is that we have to get a hold of ourselves and get mm -hmm. in control, but situations pull us out of control. And I'll just give you a quick example. The, not yesterday, the two days before my mom and I were driving down to Florida, we got a, a flat on 95 going like 80 miles an hour, had to go with the emergency blinkers over an hour to get to a tire place. The next day, the other tire blew out and the shock. And I was with my mother, prize package, right, that I have to take care of. And I just said to myself, you got to calm yourself down because if you don't calm down, it's going to be completely out of control. So the only reason I bring this up is people are throwing things. Life is throwing things at us all the time. And if we don't have the intuition, if we don't know exactly what to do, we need to work with a professional like yourself. Yeah. So I, I think this analogy came to me. Well, you know, I love analogies, but I think this one came to me because I'm listening to this book called, um, it's called Carrie Soto is back. I think it's the full title. And it's about, um, it's a, I believe it's purely fictional, but it's about a um, tennis player. It's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's a wonderful audio read um, and, or audio listen. But when you were describing that, what comes to mind is, and I'm not a tennis player, but hopefully I think everybody can get this. Like, so you're on a court and say one of those machines that pop, like throws balls at you is just throwing full speed and you don't know what to do. Like you don't have the skills to know how to respond. So you're just standing there being pummeled or you could work with a coach to teach you how to, how to hit, how to maneuver, how to hit those balls back every now and then you're going to get hit by a ball. Sure. But you're going to be hit less often and you're going to at least feel like you have control because you're at least knowing how to respond. And the more you do that, the more skilled and the better you'll be. So eventually over time, the number of times you get hit will be less and less and less. What a fabulous example. And I was a tennis player, by the way. So I Oh, perfect. <laughs> so you get it. Excellent. I absolutely get it. So Rachel, let's pull back just a little bit. And yeah. for people who are out there and they're thinking, I'm not burnt out. I sleep. I, I go to work. I get done what I need to do. What are the symptoms of being burnt out or that we're on our way? Yeah. So it's a great question. So you know, if you, you might not be right. Like not everybody's burnt out. Um, but there are signs that you are flirting with it and there are things to look out for. And you know what? Congratulations. If this is not you still pay attention, cause this could be somebody, you know, and by listening, by knowing what to look for, you could help them. Right. So, and they're going to be more fun to be around, which actually helps you just so you know, um, Burnout officially is three things and you have to experience all three and you have to experience them consistently for, for a period of time. Um, that's not to say we, you know, if you have any of them individually, they should, that you should not get help because we want to prevent ideally, but here are the three things that make it officially burnout exhaustion. So like exhaustion, overwhelm, the things that kind of, that's that first thing that we typically think like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm burnt out. Okay, well, there's two other pieces, cynicism. So burnout is, is, is related to a job workplace. So cynical about your job, like this place sucks. I hate this place. I don't feel connected. I don't feel like I'm part of the mission, you know, things like that. You don't like coming there anymore. Um, and then the third is lack of self-efficacy, meaning I suck. I can't do this. Like, why am I even here? I'm not, I'm no good. Um, the order typically is, although mixed findings, right? So I, I hesitate to give, but typically it's kind of 
I'm tired. I'm exhausted because I've been going like 90 miles an hour since I was, I don't know, 20 or whatever. I mean, like I, I sleep, but it's five minutes or it's five hours and it's like on and off. It's fits and starts. You know, I eat what I can. I forgot to eat, you know, all those things. Um, so then you get exhausted, which means your baseline is low for, for your ability to respond to these pressures, which means then you're feeling maybe like you've lost some, some self-efficacy. You've lost that sense of I'm, I'm, good at this, but you've also put some blame, some anger. You want to disengage because God, these people are making me, this, this place is making me feel, why am I even here? I'm no good. So then it becomes just kind of this, this cycle that spirals you down. And there is a reverse, which we can talk about too, a reverse spiral. Thanks so much for sharing that, Rachel. When during these symptoms, warning signs kind of when should someone reach out to you right away and 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 i say that not just because i'm like oh ooh, clients like i kind of i wish that i wish that my job didn't exist i don't feel like burnout should exist i don't feel like toxic workplaces should exist i would love to just put myself out of business you know one client or one group or one company at a time i'll go do something else um but until then, <laughs> here we are. Um, I say right away because why wait until it's worse? You're just going to make it that much harder to make it better. Why wait? Why wait? So that's why I say immediately. And if I'm not the right fit for you, I have an amazing referral network. I will get you to the right person. I can actually say Rachel does have an amazing network of people. So. <laughs> So Rachel, here's a question that people may be pondering, whether it's in a personal relationship or it's a business relationship. How can someone differentiate when they're a burnout, approaching burnout, or they're just not in a good relationship or a good career or a good job anymore? And maybe that's why they're burnout. So it's the chicken or the egg, kind of. Yeah, I mean, so... Again, technically, burnout is a workplace phenomenon. So when we're talking about burnout, when experts, I should say, because again, it's kind of thrown, the word can be thrown around. But when we're really talking about burnout, we're talking about the workplace. But here's the thing. We all know, and, and, and this is why I hate the whole like work-life conversation, because it's all life. It's work and non-work. So if we could just make that trending, that would be great. Work and non-work. Um, if I slip into work life, it's because I've been, you know, using that hashtag since like whatever. But um, it's work and non-work, and so your non-work life is going to spill over into your work life, and vice versa. So there's a get. I'm going to get nerdy with you for just a second. There's a number of theories to explain kind of human behavior and human response to other humans, human response to themselves, human response to the workplace, and one of them is called for the workplace the jobs demands resources model. And it's really simple. You can kind of get it from the name. What it means is your job is going to make demands on you and it's going to give you resources. If they're out of whack, then you have a problem. But you have also these outside influences from non-work, right? So, okay, you're... Your kid is becoming a teenager and tells you every day now, like, oh, I hate you. You're so like, whatever. You're so lame. Like, blah, blah. so now you're feeling kind of crappy, like a parent of a parent. Like maybe your, you know, your home life in other ways, your spouse, your partner, whatever, that's not going well. You're caregiving for your parent. Um, you know, your sister is getting divorced, like whatever, all of the life things you stubbed your toe that morning in the bathroom and that trickled out into making you late for work and you spilt coffee on yourself. And so just all the things. So now you are coming into this environment with less personal resources to meet the job demands. So Yes, burnout is a workplace phenomenon, but you can't ignore what's going on for the whole person. And so that's why even when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, uh, so I just, I want to kind of just get back in the habit of working out and, and um, I want to lose some weight. I'm like, cool. There's more to it than that. That's not actually why you're really here. And I'm not going to say it that way. 
but we got to peel back the onion. We can start with exercise. We can start with simple movement, but there's a reason you're not doing it. And it's not because you don't have the information. It's because you don't know how, because there's something standing in your way preventing you from doing it. Right? So like, let's figure that out. Let's figure out that core. What's throwing those resources, demand, scale off balance so that then you can, you can do the things you want to do. Great answer. Thank you. And when I think about even fitness, for example, something just popped in my head. Many times we don't want to make a change. We know we need a change, but we don't want to do the work. It's so easy here in La La Land. It's so easy just to complain and go on and on, but to actually take the steps forward and change, even to hire you as a coach, I have to acknowledge that I'm going to have to do the work. I don't want to do the work. I've been working my whole life, blah, blah, blah. So how do you help people get over this hurdle? Yeah, it's called ambivalence. And it means you're human. It doesn't mean that you suck, you're lazy, you have no willpower, you have no motivation. It just means you're a human being. Change is scary, change is hard, even if it's change you want. So two, two quick examples. I used to think I wanted to learn to play the guitar. After a few attempts over a period of years, I realized I actually didn't want to play the guitar, learn to play the guitar. I wanted to already know how to play the guitar. So guess what? I don't play the guitar. I had to be honest. Like I did not want to do the work of learning how to play the guitar. I just liked the idea of me being able to, right? So now that conversation with myself could have gone either way. I could have said, okay, why am I not practicing? Why am I not showing up? Why am I, you know, wanting to give up, you know, after a couple months? Is it because I'm afraid of looking like an idiot? Is it, is it, am I afraid I won't get this? Like, do I really want to do the effort? Is it really worth it? The answer could have been yes. But the answer for me was like, no, it's not really that important to me. But I knew my priorities and, and my values at that moment in my life. It doesn't mean that I won't ever. It just means right now I, don't, I actually don't care enough to do the work. Um, for when I was younger, I struggled with my weight. I tried to lose weight. Um, I lost, I gained, I lost, I gained, I lost, I gained, I gained, I gained, I gained. And it wasn't until I was like, okay, I want it enough to show up and do the work that I actually lost. So there was no actual magic diet. I was, the diet that I did or the, the eating plan I did worked when the others didn't because I worked. So the first step is, being honest with me or, or any coach and saying, I'm here because I want the outcome, but I'm afraid to do the work. I'm tired. And we can start with how do we overcome that ambivalence? How do we make it not scary? Because change immediately throws you into the stress response. So it completely makes sense that you were scared and you were tired and you're like, eh, I like the idea, but no thanks. It's comfortable here, even though I'm not happy. We can teach you how to make it super, super simple. And I'll give you, I'll give everyone a, a, a for instance. So, so many ideas and I don't know everybody's situation. So hopefully this works, but the next time you're waiting for your coffee or your tea to brew at home, or you're waiting in line at Starbucks or, or whatever your, your coffee shop of, you know, your coffee shop of choice, just instead of looking at your phone or whatever, just take three deep inhales and exhales. And if you want to take it a step further, just what am I hearing? You can close your eyes if you're, you know, at home or if you're not, if you don't care at the store, you know, what am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I feeling? Just three. And congratulations, you've just practiced mindfulness and it probably wasn't that terrifying. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. It can just be a little bit at a time. I love that. Thank you. And, and yeah. something else that I think really dovetails onto what you're saying, you, you mentioned about weight. So I recently lost 10 pounds and I want to lose more weight. Mm -hmm. And I gave up drinking. I gave up my Chardonnay that I've loved. The last vice that I have, I gave it up. <laughs> 
and yet I can't get to where I want to get to, which why am I even trying to get there? Because it would be the lowest weight I've had in, you know, probably 15 years. And I say to myself, well, let's see, you lost 10 pounds, which is amazing. And you're still not happy with that. So now you have more expectations and more pressure to get to a goal that really doesn't matter. When you get to that goal, what's going to happen? Are you going to get a gold star or an award? Like what's behind it? And it took you how many years to get to where you are? Like, what are your expectations and why are you obsessed with achieving a goal that is not going to be life changing? Am I the only one who has thoughts like this? No, but also I want to say it could be life changing. I'm not saying for you it is, but just for the person listening, right? Like, so I think, and this held me back for a long time, right? So it is okay to be vain, depending on the type of vanity, right? Pride in your body and your health and the way it looks. Every single one of us wants to look good. We all want to look in the mirror and be like, hell yeah. You know, even on our not so great days, but like, better than it could have been awesome you know that's okay it is okay it's actually kind of how we evolved right we're still a lot you know our brain is still tribally evolved we're trying to attract other people show that we are still like valuable um and i hesitate to say that word for people that aren't familiar with kind of this anthropology, this, this evolution that I'm talking about, what I mean is that, you know, animals signal to other animals that they are healthy and vibrant and, and can reproduce. And that is still a part of who we are. And the way we show that is outside in initially, right? Because nobody's going to look across the bar and be like, great personality. I can see that. We want them to stay for that personality, right? But we know we're going to attract them because of the the outside. And I want to just keep going this because I don't want to get a lot of hate mail. Like, oh, I'm just saying that your your self-worth is tied to your outside because that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it is okay to value the container, how it looks. It is a signal to other people that you take care of yourself, that you have confidence in yourself. That's what I'm talking about. You have to match that with the inner confidence, with the inner self-worth. It's both. It's inside out and it's outside in. And that is full well-being, right? So for some, for somebody out there, that, that last 10 pounds, that is life-changing. That is attached to a true deep value, a true deep goal. And it will create these results that they're looking for. For somebody else, they might say, mm, I thought that was important, but actually, you know what? It's not. Like I thought I needed to get down to the, some number that I heard on the radio or whatever the podcast. Um, I don't know why I said the radio. I don't listen to the radio, I listen to podcasts. But anyways, um, you know, some some number, right? Like I need to get down to one thirty, and you get down to one forty, and you're like, actually, this is great. I'm cool. No worries. Doesn't matter. So it's really it's really up to the person. And just making sure that your your pride and your outside appearance is not it is a healthy pride and that you're matching it with self-worth and self-confidence. Yeah, I really enjoyed that perspective. Thank you. So yeah. we've discussed about symptoms. Hmm. What are the impacts of being burned out? What are the impacts of stress on the container? as Mm. well as on the organs inside. Yeah, they're um, kind of whatever you can think of. (laughs) Stress affects affects everything. Inflammation affects everything. And I was at um, a workshop last night with a primary care physician, a women's internist that I do some work with. And um, we were chatting with she has for her members a dietitian or nutritionist. She has for her members a physical therapist. She has these, you know, all of these resources available. And so the three of us providers were all chatting before things um, opened up about, you know, the the way, so a, a physical therapy client might come to this physical therapist and they're like, mm, you have a lot of inflammation. I wonder if it's diet because we're not fixing it in full, you know, musculoskeletally, maybe, maybe it's related to nutrition. Maybe it's, you know, let's look at your diet. So then they might work with the nutritionist. Okay. What are, what are, what are those symptoms? And then we might 
look at like a naturopath or, or some other medical provider to do um, a sensitivity test, right? Okay, well, how else is that showing up in your life? Well, that's where I might come in and say, okay, how are we managing other areas of stress? so that all of that inflammation can go down, can go away, right? So you, you really, and the, the, from the coach perspective, it's almost like that hub for your, your care team, right? You're experiencing this, okay, have you looked at, have you looked at, have you looked at, do you want to look at those? In what order should we look at those so it's not overwhelming? Okay, you have three providers telling you to make these changes, how are you gonna do it? How, who's going to keep you accountable? What rituals can we build into your day so it's easy? Um, so a slight tangent there, but um, <laughs> the inflammation and the stress. But starting internally, right, because it, burnout is a stress response, overwhelm is a stress response. Any of those three pieces, even if you're experiencing them individually, that's a stress response. So you're going to get anything you hear in the news saying stress causes, stress is related to you that's what you're going to you're going to get. So it affects your weight, it affects your sleep, it affects your your food and drink cravings, it affects your self-worth, it affects your cognitive functioning. Um it ref it affects your your organ function. Um from the outside in, you know, things that so the 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 company that I'm partnered with for hair and skin, what they've trained us on and and through my board certification, what we've trained on. And I'm saying that so that I make that distinction. I'm not the dermatologist. I have a specific type of training up into a point, And then I would refer out if it's kind of a clinical level. Um, but that also affects, you know, collagen production. It affects acne, rosacea, eczema. So if you have underlying skin conditions, psoriasis, it's going to flare those because those are inflammation responses as well, or they can be further triggered, further exacerbated by these stress hormones. So how can you just manage it? How can you then go, going back to our tennis analogy, how can you learn to hit those balls back better? And then that's going to kind of help calm all of those symptoms down. Thank you so much, Rachel. We're going to take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. We'll be right back. Diane Floyd Bames' A Song of Peace tells the story of a young lad named Tommy whose fervent wish for peace on earth touches the hearts of his friends and family, spreads to his community, and eventually unites the whole world around making his dream of peace a reality for everyone. Sit down with the children in your life and share Tommy's amazing story of love and hope. Sing your own song of peace and invite the children to join you. Tommy's tale is more than just a story. It's a movement and everyone's warmly welcome to take part. You'll find a song of peace along with many other wonderful learning and enriching opportunities for children of all ages at dianefloydbame.com. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAP partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP Partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level.
It's good to see you after our break. Thank you to our sponsors. This is USA Global TV and Radio. I'm still Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is What's Trending. Our guest is Rachel Bain. Let's welcome her back to the show. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Hello. Nice to have you back with us. We're, we're talking about burnout. We're talking about the symptoms. We're talking about strategies. We're also talking about our hair and our skin and our container and feeling good about ourselves. So I want to continue on this conversation because I feel like it's really important. Burnout at work or disillusionment maybe in our personal lives, it can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and you gave it a fabulous example of the tennis ball machine. So for somebody just joining us, please just share that again, if you would. Sure. So I kind of, I wish my standing desk was working so I could like, you know, bop around. Um, so, you know, when you have those, those balls coming at you, right. Say visualize you're on the tennis court, you have your racket, cute outfit, you're ready. Um, and you have that machine where it's just shooting balls but you, it's your first day on the court. You've never played tennis, right? You don't know how to, you're like whack-a-mole in the air. So you're getting pummeled by these balls. Or you could sign up for a coach to give you some strategies so that you can hit the balls back. You can increase your reflexes, right? You can fine tune your skills, backhand, forehand, you know, all the things. I don't really know the language, Dr. Jacqueline, you'd have to tell me. I'm just, you know, reading the Carrie Soto book, but um, you get the point, you know, like the maneuvers you learn by doing, and you learn by getting coached so that then you can, you can hit those balls back. And the more you do it, the less often you'll get pummeled. Yes, exactly. Thank you. And for those of you who play tennis, have ever tried tennis, imagine you're on the court and the, the ball machine just keeps sending the balls that you're like ducking. If you got a, a coach over there, that's a whole different story. That's an hour you're going to spend of your time that's going to be so much more productive yeah. than you just out there winging it, so to speak. So Absolutely. But Rachel, what does an engagement with you look like? How does the person contact you? And then what happens after that? Absolutely. So the link that's up there right now, um, that's going to, it's kind of like a mini website and it's wonderful. It's just going to take you through all the different things. I update it weekly, um, but on there is a way to connect with me to set up a free consultation. Um, you know, you might hear it also described as a discovery call, but what it is, is it's a free 15 minute chat. Who are you? What are you looking for? Here's a little bit about me. Are, are we a good fit? Um, if you feel like you need one more call after that, that's fine. But after that, you know, you, you will have enough information to make a decision based on different, different programs. Um, the, the full engagement is a one, one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's personalized coaching. We work at three month blocks. So after three months, if you just needed a quick little like tune up, you're good. If you want to continue that, continue peeling these layers back, work on other things. That's where there are a lot of people are, are, you know, are doing. We have that too, but this allows you to just take a commitment step that's a little bit more approachable, especially if you're feeling, you know, a little ambivalent or a little nervous um, if you've never had coaching before. So we would do two 45 minute calls a month, each of those three months. And that gives you space. It gives you time to let things sink in, to reflect on what we've talked about, what you've shared, what you've discovered, to do some of that work. And in between those calls, you have email support. So if you come, if something comes up, if you have a question, you know, we'll, we'll set those guidelines so that I'm available still to you. Um, and then I'm working on a few different other packages. I'm going to launch a, a free seven week challenge, um, you know, a short monthly Kickstarter, you know, things, you know, like that, that are a little more asynchronous um, that will give you a, a little bit of a taste to see again, if you're a jumpstart kind of person, if you want the asynchronous kind of general general coaching, or if you want that private private coaching, I joke it's kind of like the Louis Vuitton and the knockoffs, right? Like where where are you at? Which one do you need? Um, and there's going to be something for you. Another great analogy. I love it. <laughs> I can tell you, I I love the analogies. I use them all the time. Sometimes they don't work, and I get these looks like, I'm like, let me try again. Let me come up with something different. <laughs> That I'm, I'm sure you know this, but that's a sign of a highly intelligent person. Hey, yeah, there you go. Which we already know, of course. But let's take awesome. a look at your site. 
let's go ahead. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm over here on the site. Here we go. Tell me where I should go from here. Um, well, so I'll just I'll just walk people through because it, it kind of the, the idea is like just a scroll. So if you wanted to, you could just jump all the way to the bottom, but I'll just take you kind of in order. So you can skip the top text. That's just a little bit about me. If you've never if you've never worked with me, um, the first part is I you can sign up for my weekly wellness tips. Um, they're short, I promise, because I work with, I am busy, you are busy, we don't have time. Um, the next one is for those that are looking on their outside container, right? Um, we have like ha hair and skin, just a quick little thing. If you want to sign up for some more information on that, you can also do a free consult. So that's just a link off there. Um, if you're looking for a fun and flexible side gig, I can potentially help with that. So you can see each one of these links relates to an area of work that I do. And if you imagine well-being as what it is, which is it's think of it like a wheel or let's go with a, a trivial pursuit puzzle piece, right? There's all these different little pie pieces and each one is a different color reflecting a different piece. So there's financial, there's physical, there's mental, there's spiritual, there's social, there's so, you know, depending on what I want to feature that week. And I said, like I said, I update it pretty week, but fairly week, um, fairly regularly, like usually once a week. There's going to be a different, a different little thing there for you. Um, so you you have that physical, you have the outside in, you have the financial or the community, the social with that fun flex side gig, um, a burnout like looking at the whole container, that whole trivial, trivial uh, pie, and then just again, if somebody doesn't really know me, I have a check my street cred so you know who I am, what my background is in, um, a, a way for you to just quickly text me. Some, some more downloads. Um, and then I just, a few a few personal favorites. I love the pair of eyewear glasses. I didn't have them on for the show, but I'll just, so they're the ones where you can like take the magnetic pieces on and you can change them up for your outfit. So if you love that too, if you want to make your glasses an accessory, you can just hit that link and save some money. Um, I just love them. So I, I put my, my referral link up there. Um, and then I mentioned, I love audiobooks as an author. Um, you know, I love books. I love reading and audio just makes it possible for me to read as much as I want. So I, I created a free Facebook group for anybody that also uses the Libby app because, so we can share, share fun favorites. Um, and then if you scroll down, you'll have, um, so I might feature something from hair or skin that week. So the hair is new. So we do that. And then, um, my blog post is usually in the middle and then a link to my book. Um, so again, I'm here, as I said, because I have fallen flat on the pavement a million times. And over time I learned how to get back up more quickly and I learned how to catch myself before a face plant. So that's the story of how I learned to do that. And like that first, that first period of overcoming of deciding I can be my own hero. I can change. Um, I can change myself. Um, and so there's pretty much always a link to to that book. So that's that's the quick, it's not the full website, but that's just kind of my, my link tree, if you will. Um, so yeah, so that's how to use it. All right, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah. Lots of great information. And can you work with people anywhere in the world, any age, Is there, are there any restrictions? There are some restrictions. So with coaching, I tend to work just in the United States. Um, the, you know, I, I would love to expand that. Um, I'm working with an attorney to just make sure all my my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed on that. Um, but right now, the coaching is anywhere in the United States and, and U.S. territories. Um, and then skin and hair is U.S., Canada, and Australia for now. All right. It's good to know what you offer and where you offer it. That's very important. Yeah. So Rachel, I, I ask you this every time, but what can you share as we close out as inspiration for people who are so excited to work with you, so excited to actually look themselves in the eye and say, wow, I, I need some help and I need someone to help me. And that's Rachel. You know, I reached out to, so when I, my biggest moment similar to that, I said to this person, essentially, 
I am not happy where I am. I don't really know why. I think it's this, what do I do? Where do I go? And it's not verbatim, but, um, and they told me where to go. I share that to say, I can empathize with anybody that reaches out to me and says, I don't, I, I, I know where I'm at isn't great. I don't, and, and I have this idea of where I want to be, but like, how, what's the bridge? What's the path? And then that, the, the creation of that path is what we'll do together. So I've been where you've been. It may not be exactly, but I've been in that feeling. And that's probably why I'm the best person, because if nothing else, I honor that you have the courage to reach out and the emotions that you're feeling. And that's why I always say, if I'm not the right fit, because we have to be the right fit for each other. I will, I will sit, I will refer you out. I will tell you where to go. Even if it's, hey, I don't have somebody in your area directly, but here's the national organizations where you can look up their, their people and start there and get their free resources. So there's always, there's always an option. And that initial call is just, what's the right option for you with where you're at right now? Thank you so much, Rachel. For people who yeah. can't read the banner or they're listening on a radio station or podcast, what is the the way to contact you? So just go to, I'll just read out the website name and that would be the kind of the one stop there. It's on a mission dot bio slash Rachel Bame slash, and my name is spelled Rachel E-L. So just R-A-C-H-E-L and then B-O-E-H-M. All right. Thank you for another fantastic chock full of information interview. I really appreciate it. It's always great to see you. Oh, it's always an honor to be on. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacqueline. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you again on the next show. Absolutely. Bye, Bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Please do reach out to Rachel. I can tell you myself, I, I completely recommend her 1000%. So please do reach out and work with her. As soon as possible like she said when you see the signs the symptoms don't wait do something because you know what you're going to start feeling better a lot sooner instead of getting hit with all those balls all right our next show is coming up it's the corner bookstore where we will be featuring the star of our show diane floyd bame and our special guest ann charles so please do join us that will be coming up at 12 o'clock eastern standard time 5 p.m British summertime, which I understand British summertime is changing very soon. So do join us. If you missed any of our shows, we do broadcast Monday through Friday. Please go over to our YouTube channel, USA Global TV and Radio. You can find all of our shows there. Thanks again for watching and listening. Bye for now.